Oh, lights. Green light is blinking. Crying satellites. Still blinking. Five satellites. Eight satellites. Required eight satellites, and Ellie says that's sufficient. Now I have ten. Thirteen. Okay. Take her up. Hit the mode button and the aileron. I remember that controls are reversed. You can bring her down once you have her upside down. She has still got to keep her stabilized. Especially if there's wind. Got a slight wind here. So, down is up, up is down. Do mode, aileron. That's the secret feature um, that they had a little insert in the manual. Yeah, I have GPS on for that one, of course. And uh, with the wind blowing a little bit this way, still had to do correction. You saw it want to drift slightly. It wasn't much. We got 16 satellites. Uh, 
to get it near the ground. Put it in uh, optical flow mode and it'll try to stay there. You can see it. It's trying to stay there on optical mode because it sees the ground. It moves around a little bit because it looks for the ground to change. There's basically all black except for a stripe in the middle. So you see it kind of going back and forth. If you have a, if the ground has more texture, like maybe it was out over the grass, it might stay in one spot better. Optical ground is doing pretty good. Middle is GPS, up is uh, optical ground. There's a little camera right behind the uh, motor where it's on the bottom where you can see the motor where it can, it can pull air through to keep it cool. Um, there's a little camera and it points to the ground. Just like the uh, Flight Wing 200. Oh, I think the Flight Wing 200 one is way more sensitive because if I fly over a fence, the thing shoots up in the air. Also flies very slow in optical mode. You know, see if it can see the... Uh, see if it can see the... things we got to put our airplanes on the stands. Yeah, see it's going up a little bit. Sees them. It's, like I say, it's not near as sensitive as the Flight Wing 200. Flight Wing 200 shoots up Basically, it doubles the height off the ground. Um, it would be up here if it saw that stand. Now the wind caught it there and it went backwards a little bit. Now if you put it on GPS, it's gonna try to stay there. Yep, oh, wait a minute, I moved the stick. It's on GPS now. Now with it this low, it's basically using optical ground and the GPS to stay where it is. And the wind is blowing towards my face. So it's doing a pretty good job of staying there. You can see the wind sock. Well, it's kind of going this way actually. Side, it's hitting the side of the helicopter and it's staying there. That's pretty darn good. Um, we've got about an eight, nine power gusts of wind hitting the side of the heli and it's staying there. I can tell it um, got to land. Find it never uh, comes down in the exact spot. Neither does uh, an expensive DJI either. <laughs> Start it up again, up elevator. Red light is blinking. Let's see the uh, visible fence down here. Yep, see it stops on its own. I was pushing it forward. Won't let me go forward because it knows the battery's low.
can see all the all the lights blink too. Side light, light there, light on the back, red light there. They all blink when the battery's low. Not just the top light. And she should otter land herself in a minute. Trying to go back to where she was. Doing that all by itself. Now see, it's not exactly landing where I want it to, so I can steer it. Okay, so I can avoid the grass. It's still doing it, still doing the actual landing by itself, but I could steer it. Dang nice technology, I mean, it's amazing what they keep coming up with. It's no wonder drones are wreaking havoc in Ukraine. Those things are even more sophisticated than this little thing. Everything's off. 